Coming up, we're talking late model national tour full timers, the Tulsa shootout. I've got an update on Trailway Speedway and more. Let's go. Today is Tuesday, December 28th, 2021. Welcome into Dirt Tracker Daily. I'm Justin Fiedler. I got asked recently about full timers for the national touring late model series and who will be racing where. And I thought this morning we could just kind of talk through the possibilities for both series as we approach the start of the year. About two weeks away from the start of the Wild West shootout at Vado in New Mexico. Then the Outlaws are at Volusia for the Sunshine Nationals starting on January 20th before Lucas gets started at Gold Isles in Georgia on January 27th. There isn't a lot of time before we'll be neck deep in the dirt late model season, and I'm honestly surprised we haven't heard more about series commitments. I do think it's possible that more teams and drivers will run a schedule like Brandon Overton has in recent years, and I've talked about that here on the show recently. I also think with the addition of the XR stuff for 2022, it might be a while before we have a clear picture about who will race where. And it's not uncommon for guys to get through the opening speed weeks before they make a decision. We saw that with Chris Madden in 2021 with the Outlaws, but unfortunately that late move probably cost him a real shot at the World of Outlaws Championship. With the Outlaws, we know for sure they have signed Tanner English, Gary Dillon, Max Blair, Kyle Hammer, Josh Richards, Boom Briggs, and Gordy Gundaker. We still aren't 100% certain on Brandon Shepard, plus drivers like Madden, Tyler Bruning, uh, Dennis Herb Jr., and Ryan Gus, and all of those guys were full-time with the Outlaws last year. And we do know that Ricky Weiss won't be full-time with the Outlaws, is going to go pick and choose for 2022. On the Lucas side, the only driver in team that I can find who have declared explicitly in a public place they are racing with the series is PCC and Spencer Hughes. Outside of that, I don't see why Tim McCready, Hudson O'Neill, Jonathan Davenport, Jimmy Owens, and Tyler Erb won't be back full time. They've been Lucas mainstays in recent years, and I don't think that will change. Along with that, Kyle Bronson ran every Lucas race in both 2021 and 2020 and should be in the mix. I also think it's very likely that Earl Pearson Jr. is a full-timer in the Jason Papich-owned car. I don't know about names like Ricky Thornton Jr., Shane Clanton, Mike Marler, and Stormy Scott, who are all full-time or basically ran a significant amount of races with the series. Clanton's been kind of back and forth between the Outlaws and Lucas in his career. And RTJ was Lucas Rookie of the Year last year, and I'd hope that SSI wouldn't bail on him just yet. Marler and Stormy didn't run all of the races in 2020, uh, 2021, and I assume that will be the case again next year. Besides the two national series, it's possible that the XR Super Series could draw some guys away with all of the money on the line in those races this year, plus the Flow Series that's back in 2022. But guys should be able to run both of the national tours with no conflicts and still run for Flow points. I do think the summer nationals fields could take a hit, especially amongst those that race for the championship. With all the money available elsewhere, the appeal might be, uh, just be a little too great there. In talking through some of this, I wish I had more clarity for you, but it feels like some of the teams don't have clarity for themselves yet. Drop a comment with your thoughts, maybe what rumors you heard uh, about who might be racing where and what you think about next season with the Outlaws and with Lucas. Load-in continues this morning at the Tulsa Expo Center for the Tulsa Shootout with practice on the schedule for this afternoon. According to a tweet last night from Lonnie Wheatley, 1,465 entries had drawn in already, and there were still almost another 250 paid entries that could still possibly draw in. So that would take the total car count up over 1,700 for the event. That's absolutely an insane amount of cars for six divisions of racing. Among the entries is a surprise addition this morning. NASCAR Cup champion Kyle Busch is in the building and will run in four classes, winged and non-winged outlaw, winged A-class, and stock non-wing. He's racing in cars prepared by Joe B. Miller. Kyle's son Brexton will also race in the junior sprint category. Other NASCAR drivers in the building include the aforementioned Christopher Bell and past Truck Series champions Brett Moffat and Sheldon Creed. Both of those guys have been regularly competing in micros at Millbridge this season. Practice for all divisions starts at 1 p.m. local time with racing set to start tomorrow morning. We talked a while back about Trailway Speedway in Pennsylvania being up for sale and we got confirmation yesterday that the track and the surrounding farmland has officially been sold. Unfortunately for fans and competitors at the track, the new owners do not plan on continuing racing at the facility. 
It ends 49 years of racing at the track that featured 358 wing sprint cars among its other weekly divisions. A lot of Pennsylvania racers have made their way through Trailway, including names like Danny Dietrich, Logan Schuhart, Chase Dietz, and others. The tough end for such a staple of weekly Central Pennsylvania racing. The Hossetter's other winter racing programs will continue even without the racetrack. Last night was round number six of the iRacing World of Outlaws World Championship. The series took to the virtual Knoxville Raceway to begin the downhill half of the season towards the championship. Cameron Merriman entered the night as the points leader after both James Edens and Alex Bergeron had connection issues during the previous two rounds and gave up their spots atop the standings. Anything can still happen, though, with the top five or six drivers still very close together in the standings. The other battle we're looking at is for the final guaranteed spot in next year's championship. Only the top 15 drivers will be set to return for next season, while everyone else must battle their way back in through the qualifying series. Tyler Ducharme held the spot before last night's race, with five drivers very closely in tow, led by Aiden Beerline. In the night's feature, Bergeron sat on the pole, and he was comfortable out front until very late in the race. Hayden Cardwell ran him down from second, and the two were side-by-side side coming to the white flag. Unfortunately for Cardwell, though, Bergeron drifted up the track, and the two tangled, sending Cardwell crashing out of the event. It's definitely a tough break for Cardwell, who was very clearly faster, uh, but I'm not sure Bergeron saw him there until it was way too late. On the restart, Bergeron held off Braden Eiler and grabbed his first win of the season. Eiler ended up second, Tyler Shell third, Blake Majulis fourth, and Aiden Beerline was fifth. We'll have to see how the points shake out, but the win may have been enough for Bergeron to take back over the championship lead, with Cameron Merriman starting 20th and racing back up to 6th at the end. The series goes quiet this coming Monday night, January 3rd, and returns to racing on Monday, January 10th, with a stop at Cedar Lake Speedway. The only thing left on the streaming schedule for today is Flow Racing 24-7. There were sprint cars from Perth Motorplex earlier this morning, but that show has ended. You'll be able to roll back and watch the replay, though, over on Dirt Vision if you're interested. To see the full daily streaming schedule with links to watch, visit dirttracker.com slash watch tonight. And that's it for the show today. Hope you have a good Tuesday. If you have thoughts about the topics on today's show, please leave them in the comments below or tweet at me. Thanks, everybody, for tuning in. We'll see you tomorrow for more Dirt Tracker Daily. 